Venom is a symbiote, otherwise known as a member of the race Glintar, an inorganic amorphous alien race who once peacefully existed as part of a hive mind, set on creating an intergalactic peacekeeping society by bonding with hosts, noble warriors meant to be the agents of the cosmos. But this corrupted some of their race, sending them out into the universe bent on overtaking planets and building an empire. While their race has been known to adapt and evolve over time, there's a plethora of weaknesses that have hindered Venom and other symbiotes in the past, and some of them are pretty entertaining. So today we're counting down our pick for the top 10 Venom weaknesses you need to know, especially before Tom Hardy's hunky face graces our screens in that symbiote suit. In at number 10, sound. One of the most well known weaknesses of the Clintar is sound, specifically sonic based attacks. No, not that sonic. Loud noises can cause harm and distract Venom, and can make the symbiote jump ship from its host. We've seen it used as a tactic against Venom multiple times in unique forms, like when Black Hat busted out a sonic sound gun to weaken the character. Spider Man has even bombarded both him and Carnage with loud speakers to cause them both to have their symbiotes unravel from their bodies. It's a trick Deadpool has used in the past too, with a hip speaker. Up next, number 9, tranquilizers. While not a traditional weakness, it's worth knowing that the symbiotes have been susceptible to tranquilizers in the past. For example, the Flash Thompson Venom. In order to control the symbiote who has bonded with him, he must pump it full of tranquilizers every 24 hours when it's off of him and kept inside a US government facility. While that seemingly didn't help much in terms of Flash coping with the desire to bond with the symbiote, the symbiote itself managed to behave for the most part. Up next, number 8, Heat. Fire and extreme heat do not bode well with Venom and cause it an extreme amount of pain. This is one of the creature's classic vulnerabilities, and in many cases, over the years, fire has been used to cause the symbiote to flee its host, leaving the host and it powerless. Now imagine what an explosion can do to the character. Combining fire and loud noises, Venom can be pushed into a pretty debilitating state. Dude is literally allergic to explosions. Up next, number 7, Electricity. In the Ultimate Marvel Universe, another Venom weakness was revealed in the form of high voltage electricity. Aside from introducing us to a massive version of the character, this Venom had a suit that consumed incompatible hosts from the inside out, which caused it to devour other living things in order to sustain itself. Yeah, pretty terrifying. He's also incredibly durable. He's been hit by lasers, cut up a bunch, and was even hit by a helicopter, and still remains standing. But high voltage electricity? Yeah, it'll get the job done. In our number six spot, anti venom. There have been a few instances in which some sort of biochemical was made in order to fight off venom, but perhaps the most potent one was the anti venom, who first appeared in 2008's Spider Man story New Ways to Die. When the symbiote attempts to rebond with Eddie Brock, his skin becomes caustic to the symbiote. A new white version of it forms over his body, bonding with the white blood cells that were previously charged with healing energy when Eddie. Cancer was cured. It's immune to fire, heat, and sound attacks, and produces antibodies that act as a healing ability, but can harm the regular symbiote when it touches it. Up next, number five, poisons. The symbiote has some pretty animalistic qualities, so it makes perfect sense that Venom would have something higher up on the food chain hunting it down. One of these predators comes in the form of poisons, a species of crystalline aliens that are birthed from the poison queen. They are considered to be nature's answer to the symbiotes, and they infect them through direct contact in order to form a one sided union to manipulate them. Venom isn't the only symbiote that the race has preyed on. Either. Discovered by Doctor Strange when he was bonded to a Venom symbiote from Earth 17952, poisons were assimilating Clintar and their hosts in an attempt to become more powerful. So the Venomized Doctor Strange rallied Venomized heroes and villains from the multiverse, and bam, there's the plot for Venomverse. In at number four, Xenofangs. The Xenofang race is one of Venom's enemies. A shape shifting alien race, they prey on symbiotes, and they have paralytic saliva that they emit from their bodies that can paralyze symbiotes as well, which also apparently enhances their taste when they consume them. So their saliva is kind of like really deadly ketchup. Up. The race first appeared in Venom the Hunted issue 1 in 1996. Plus, fun fact, their exoskeletons don't have any pain sensors, making them invulnerable to the sensation. Up next at number 3, Chocolate. Like any living being, the symbiote requires sustenance, and in some iterations of the Venom character, it craves a chemical in order to prevent itself from going insane. The chemical, phenethylamine, can be found in two places, one being human brain tissue, and the second, chocolate. Yeah, I think I'd rather consume that. This is why at times we've seen both Carnage and Toxin mention devouring brains, and why Eddie Brock carried around chocolate with him in the 90s Venom series. So how is this a weakness? Well, without chocolate, or brains, Venom loses its mind and can become uncontrollably cannibalistic. A crazed opponent is easier to defeat than a skilled, thoughtful one. Plus, losing one's mind doesn't really help much in any case, does it? In our number two spot, the host. Venom and any other symbiote can only be as good as its host. If they're bonded with an individual that is destructive towards their nature, they'll likely exhibit really abusive behavior, or altogether are pushed out of that host's body. This has happened a few times. Once with Wolverine in New Avengers 35, when a symbiote bonded with the character and was pushed out of his body by his advanced healing factor. And again in Dead 
Deadpool's Secret Secret Wars issue 1. The Venom symbiote went insane when it had bonded with Deadpool before jumping ship to go bond with Spider Man. And last but not least, in her number one spot, the feels. During the Planet of Symbiotes and Web of Spider Man Super Special Volume 1, Issue 1, Eddie Brock releases a cry of agony so massive that it causes the entire symbiote race to commit mass suicide. This is a massive telekinetic scream that is meant to subdue the symbiotes, but creates so much pain and despair that they all kill themselves, since it's just too much to bear. Oh, right? Now, in a predecessor issue, the one shot The Amazing Spider Man Super Special Issue 1 from April 1995, the symbiote is rejected by Eddie Brock and is so distressed by the rejection that it unleashes a telepathic scream. To summon a spaceship of symbiotes to Earth, which inevitably leads to the screaming and then the mass suicide. We also learn from this story arc that the symbiotes take over host bodies from other races in order to feel emotion. So, all in all, turns out the sad feels really affect the symbiotes and that they can die of a broken heart. Alright, there we have it, friends. Which of these Venom weaknesses surprised you the most? And which of these do you think we'll get to see more of in the upcoming Venom film? Let us know all of your thoughts and all of your feels, as long as they aren't deadly ones, in those comments below. If you dug this video, please show us some love and hit that like button. And if you have haven't already, why not click subscribe too and hang out with us some more. We've got a ton of other nerdy videos on our channel just waiting for you to get your eyeballs on them. So make sure you check them out by clicking on that playlist flashing on your screen. In the meantime, thanks for watching everybody. I'll catch you all in the next video.